Hello everybody, uh, just about enjoying language. I was uh, having a snack in Kilworth last week in Cotter's pub and we were just jokingly talking about a happy marriage and uh, Donald said to me, he said, the secret of a happy marriage Tony is to keep your mouth shut and your wallet open. <laughs> So these little, I want to look at these little gems and treasures which pop up during the day or pop up at night time, pop up from anywhere. Joe Biden was talking about Trump last week and he said uh, when Trump was going to, supposed to do something, he said, oh the proof of the pudding is in the eating and so on. This is a memorial card and it's... Uh, done by my sister-in-law about a mother who lived in Sligo and she said her favourite sayings were, and she put them in the memorial card, little treasures for her. There's no use in crying over sp spilt milk, very common one. Never leave for tomorrow what you can do today. If a thing's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. It's natural, it's as natural to die as it is to be born. And that's um, Rose Cohen from Sligo. That's what she's remembered for, which is quite, uh, quite wonderful. Sometimes the little funny things. Uh, love is blind, but the neighbours can see. Uh, I want to tell you about when I was little and my grandmother gave us half a crown. Half a crown was a lot of money in those days. Well, I took it to school and I held it tight like that and the kids, children were saying, Giz a look, giz a look, because it was such a rare thing. But we had a competition in the classroom, uh, collecting money for charity. There was three or four different roles. One had one and sixpence and the other one had ninepence halfpenny. And uh, they, were, they were collecting for the waifs and strays. But I give my half a crown in, and of course, whew, it was all during Lent, we won the competition, and I was being slapped on the back, and everything was lovely. But I went back home to my grandmother's, and I was so excited, I said, Look, Mummy, we won, we won. And she just looked at me, and she said, You daft bugger, what did you do that for? And I was so embarrassed and ashamed that uh, I, I didn't really want to take anything from her again. But later on she said, here's, here's six months she just gave you. And I said, no, it's okay, Granny, it's okay. And then she said, never refuse anything but blows. <laughs> and that stuck with me since. Um, I, I think the great, better than any church teaching, if you want to say that, and there was one I thought was particularly good for Toastmasters. Um, just a few words, read it in a book last week. Fear is a thief. And I thought to myself, well that's right. Because if, if you're frightened or you're nervous, well all your ideas are either stolen away or blocked. So I said, well, you know, you don't usually think of it that way, but at this time you did. And one other phrase that stayed with me practically since I was 20. I wasn't feeling so good then and I went to the doctors and just above the doctors waiting room was a sign. I had no shoes and I felt sorry for myself till I met a man who had no feet. Now that's okay, it's a good phrase, but half an hour later just opening a book at random in the library. There was the same phrase again. I had no shoes. I felt sorry for myself till I met a man who had no feet. And then you carry that with you for maybe the rest of your life. And if you see people from Syria in, in tents and it's freezing cold and you say, oh, I've got me problems, oh, I've got this. And then you think, and then it goes away. So these little nuggets of wisdom. Now, we want to enjoy language, and this is an example of where I enjoy it. And it's travelling from Mallow Railway Station to Dublin. We get the train in Mallow. 
and whenever we go the train starts off slowly and you can hear the clicking and the clacking of the wheels on the rails and this poem seen from a railway carriage gives that feeling of travelling how it's happening it's called seen from a railway carriage Faster than furries, faster than witches, bridges and houses, hedges and ditches, charging along like troops in a battle, all through the meadows, the horses, the cattle, all the sights of the hill and the plain, fly as thick as driving rain, ever before in the wink of an eye, painted stations whistle by, here's a child who gathers and scrambles, all by himself in the gathering brambles, here is a mill and here is a river, just a glimpse, and gone forever. But you get the feel of the accelerating uh, speed of the train. And you can really feel it. And I always say that whenever, just when we're starting off, just, just for fun. Just for fun. Finally, you just want to do a monologue, which was... Monologues were very popular at one time, but we've moved into a different age and they're forgotten about. This is about Jim. Uh, he was eaten by a lion. And it's by Hilla Belloc. Now there wasn't babysitters in those days, they weren't called babysitters, they were called nurses, so that might fit in better. So Jim by Hella Bella. There was a boy, his name was Jim. His friends were very good to him, they gave him tea, cakes and jam, slices of delicious ham, little tricycles to ride and chocolate with pink inside. And read him stories through and through, and even took him to the zoo. But there it was, a dreadful fate befell him, <clears throat> which I now relate. You know, at least you ought to know, for I have often told you so, that little boys never are allowed to leave their nurses in a crowd. Now this was Jim's, a special foible. <laughs> He ran away when he was oible, and he hadn't gone a yard when BANG! With open jaws a lion sprang, and hungrily began to eat the boy, beginning at his feet. Now just imagine how it feels, when first your toes, and then your heels, and then, by gradual degrees, your calves and ankles, shins and knees are slowly eaten, bit by bit. <laughs> no wonder Jim detested it. No wonder that he shouted, Hi! The honest keeper heard his cry, and though very fat, he almost ran to help the little gentleman. Ponto! he ordered as he came. Well, Ponto was the lion's name. Down, sir! Down, sir! Put it down! The lion made a sudden stop and let the dainty morsel drop and slump reluctant to his cage, snarling with disappointed rage. But the lion having reached his head the miserable boy was dead said mother as she dried her eyes well it gives me no surprise he would not do as he was told his father who was self-controlled bade all the children round attend to James's miserable end and never, never leave a hold of nurse for fear of finding something worse. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you.